All right. So this is just going to be a continuation of a little bit of what we discussed in class. When we started to cover acid-base reactions, we talked about what their uh, what that reaction is, where you have something producing H+, plus, something producing OH-, minus, using our Arrhenius definition. And then I showed you what one of those reactions looked like. And you know, that was a specific type of solution reaction. And we're going to go a little bit more in depth on that. And so the way that we usually think about these acid-base reactions, as far as we're concerned for this class, is that we call these reactions that are, we said they're neutralizations because we take an acid or a base and we take the pH down to a normal amount. We get rid of either one of those reactants. We call the process of doing that a titration. And in a titration, we have a substance of known concentration. That is then reacted with a substance of unknown concentration. And the purpose of this is going to be unsurprising to you all. We're trying to figure out the concentration of one thing using the concentration of another. So this is just a standard solution uh, stoichiometry problem where we have a lot of information on one thing and not as much information on another thing. And so we're going to keep adding our solution of known concentration until all of the unknown is reacted. And we reach a point uh, called the equivalence point. And this is the point at which <clears throat> the reaction is complete. And another way to think about this is that at this point, your moles of A are going to be equal to your moles of B. Uh, in the case of just a acid that produces one proton with a base that produces one equivalent of hydroxide. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, more specifically, what we can say is that moles of H plus is equal to moles of OH minus, because this is actually true in all cases, whereas moles of A and B, if you're talking about A and B as the acid and the base, if you have a polyprotic, that'll change things around a little bit. So let's look at what this looks like. So here, we're going to react an acid with a base. And let's say we're doing a reaction between HCl and NaOH. And we produced, as we know, H2O and uh, NaCl as our products. And we said our net equation was H plus from HCl and OH minus from NaOH come together to produce water. So, for example, let's say that the unknown is my H+. Plus. I have some amount of H+, plus in here. I just don't know how much. What I'm going to do is I'm slowly going to add hydroxide, OH- minus, to that. And so, with the first hydroxide that comes in here, what it's going to do, as we have in our reaction above, is it's going to come together with that H+. Plus, and together they're going to make an equivalent of water. And we're going to keep adding hydroxide to the solution until every single H plus is reacted. And so let's say here we still have these two H pluses left. We have a single hydroxide for each one of them. And in all cases, they come together to make that water. What we've done is we've had all H plus turned to H2O. And if we had started this reaction not knowing how many H pluses are in there, we added, you know, in, in essence, three OHs goes into solution. And so that must mean that if this has reached a neutral point, that there were three H pluses in solution. So we figured out how many H pluses were in the flask by slowly adding OH minus. And the way that we're going to track this is we could do it a couple different ways. The most common one is you can track it by monitoring the pH. So you can use pH paper, which is something that changes based off pH. And in all of these examples of the three things I have below, 
We're tracking it by monitoring the acidity or basicity of solution, which is the pH. And so you've heard of this before. So in our pH paper, it's in the name that it's monitoring, it's monitoring the pH based off of acidity. And so here you have, off to the right, we have an example of what I drew above where you have an unknown number of white dots in here and you add enough OH minus that you reach uh, a neutral point. The second way you can monitor pH is using a pH probe. And this gives a numerical uh, report of the pH. And if we're doing a neutralization, we're going to go until we reach a pH equal to 7. The third and final way that we can follow a, uh, a acid-based neutralization reaction is using something known as an indicator. And that's a chemical, which in and of itself is also partially acidic, that will change color based off the pH. And the most often one that you'll use, which you'll see a lot in Chem 12, is going to be phenolphthalein. So these are kind of lab-specific things, but more towards our class in lecture, what we're going to be looking at when we look at these problems is we're just worried about the neutralization. We're worried about reaching that equivalence point. So how much acid or base do we have to add to reach an equivalence point? And then just like any other solution reaction, we say if it takes, you know, a certain uh, number of milliliters to completely react, we know that, you know, that's going to give us our moles of H plus and our moles of H minus. So let's look at an example equation here. We're saying the titration, and I'm going to grab my highlighter really quick, titration of a 10 mil sample of HCl of unknown concentration. So I'll do that one in red. So we have HCl, unknown concentration, reacts with 12.4, sorry, 12.54 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar NaOH to reach the equivalence point. And what we're trying to figure out is what is the concentration of HCl. And so we can write down everything that we know here. We know that we have a volume of HCl that's equal to 10.0 milliliters. We know we have a concentration of HCl, which is unknown. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then we have a volume of NaOH, which is equal to 12.54 milliliters. And we have a concentration of NaOH, which is equal to 0 0.100 molar. And you might see me today when I talk about concentration, I might put something in brackets like this, and that just means concentration of whatever's inside of those brackets. So in that case, that would have been NaOH. And so we know that this is telling us we have reached the equivalence point. And we know that at the equivalence point that your moles H plus is equal to your moles of OH minus. And this is a reaction we've looked at before. But for any reaction we talked about with our solution stoichiometry, we want to write and balance the chemical reaction. So we have HCl aqueous plus NaOH aqueous is going to H2O plus NaCl aqueous, and our H2O is in the liquid phase. So this is already a balanced equation, but we can put the uh, these ones in front of every single species we have so that whenever we do a molar ratio, uh, we already have those there. And so now we're going to find our number of moles of either a reactant or a product. For us, it's reactant, where we have the information of volume and concentration. If we know both those things, we can figure out the moles of our known. So this is all about our known right here. So what we can see is that our known is going to be the NOH, because that's where we have both a volume of concentration. So we're going to take our volume, 12.54 milliliters of NaOH. And then we're going to, if this is our volume of NaOH, this is also going to be the number of moles of NaOH. We're then going to convert to HCl here and end up with, in our case, instead of a volume, we're just worried about a concentration. So we're going to branch this off to do a concentration of HCl. Okay. And so to convert from our 12 mils of NaOH to our number of moles of NaOH, 
we're going to multiply that to the concentration. And so our concentration, we said, was 0 0.100 moles per liter. And we can express liters in terms of milliliters as 1,000 milliliters. Okay. So we are now at our number of moles. And we know to go from moles of A to moles of B, we're going to use our molar ratio. And our molar ratio says that there's one mole NaOH using the stoichiometric coefficient right here for every one mole HCl using the stoichiometric coefficient right here. All right. And so at this point, if we go ahead and do these calculations, what we would get is that this is 1.25 times 10 to the minus third moles of HCl. And the reason that we've stopped here is because we're not trying to go to volume here. We're actually trying to end up with a concentration. And we know that our concentration is simply going to be our moles of acid divided by our volume of acid, or our acid solution. And in this case, we have our moles right here, and then our volume is what we looked at, and I'll highlight it in yellow. Here's our volume, here's our moles, so we can just plug those things in. So we can say our concentration of that HCl is then going to be the 1.25 times 10 to the minus third moles HCl divided <clears throat> by our volume in liters, which 10 mils is the same as 0 0.01 liters, and we get a concentration here of 0 0.125 molar, okay? And that's 0 0.125 molar HCl. And this is not a trick I recommend always doing, but in the case where you have all your stoichiometric coefficients are the same between your acid and your base, HCl and NaOH, you can use M1V1 equals M2V2 because effectively this is saying moles is equal to moles, which is what we've already established. But before when we did this, we did this for dilutions, where we said the moles that we add of our concentrated solution that we then dilute are equal on both sides. Here, we're saying moles acid is equal to moles of base, because they are equal for this titration. And so if you plugged in your numbers here, for acid, we had Concentration of X, volume of 10, is equal to concentration of 0 0.1, volume of 12.54, you divide by 10, you divide by 10, you would have gotten that X was equal to the 1.254 molar. So this is a shortcut just to check, but this is not something you should always do. I recommend you go through the process of calculating moles and then looping back around to check with that M1V1, just because it's not always going to work, specifically when you have polyprotics like this. And so in this question, we're working with, instead of you know the simple HCl plus NaOH, now we're looking at the reaction of H2SO4. And so as before, we can highlight what we have, a volume with an unknown concentration. And we say it requires 17.5 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar calcium hydroxide. And we're asked, what is the concentration of H2SO4? So a very similar question, just with a slightly different approach. And so pause the video right here and go ahead and work through this. And then we'll come back around and uh, work through it together. All right, so I'm assuming you have come back. And so just like we did on the last um, slide, what we can do is we can sort what we have and what we know is that we have a volume of calcium hydroxide that's equal to 17.5 milliliters. We have a concentration of calcium hydroxide that's equal to 0 0.100 molar. And then for our acid, we have a volume of H2SO4 that's equal to 12.5 milliliters and a concentration of H2SO4 that is unknown. And that's what we're trying to figure out. So we've sorted. Now we can strategize. 
And from our strategize step, what we can imagine doing, as we've done before, is we'll start by balancing the equation, which we'll do in a second. But once we have a balanced equation, we're going to start with number two here, which is determining our known. And we're going to utilize the molarity and volume of something we have, uh, where we have both those pieces of information. So we're going to be starting with our volume of calcium hydroxide. Let me make sure I put this with the right uh, coefficients. We're then going to go to our moles of calcium hydroxide. We'll then go to our, now that we have moles of known, we're going to move to now moles of unknown. So this is going to be our moles of H2SO4, putting this once again in parentheses. And then once we have moles of H2SO4, we're going to take that and convert that to a concentration of H2SO4. And in each one of these steps, what we're going to do is the first step, volume to moles. We're just going to multiply by concentration. To go from moles to moles, we're going to use the molar ratio. And then to go from moles to concentration, we're just going to take moles over volume. So something that we have done before. And so we'll start by balancing our chemical reaction in our solve step. And so we said it's a reaction between H2SO4 plus calcium hydroxide. And this being a neutralization, we're expecting to make water, which is going to come from this. And I'll actually highlight them in yellow. It's going to come from the H plus from the sulfuric acid reacting with the OH minus. And what we should be left with is then a salt of calcium sulfate. And if we check charges, we have calcium 2 plus coming together with sulfate 2 minus. That cancels out. That's good. Now we can check if everything's balanced. On the left side, we have two hydrogens. On the right side, we have, uh, sorry, on the left side, we have two hydrogens here plus two hydrogens here. So that's four. And on the right side, we only have two. So we'll put a two in front here. And then if we check for our oxygens not coming from sulfate, we have two here and we have two here. So this should be our balanced form of our chemical reaction. And what's interesting about this one is that calcium sulfate salt that we make is actually insoluble. So we'll have two interesting things coming out of this. We have H2O liquid and calcium sulfate solid. And you can think about what that means for the net ionic equation. So now what we're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is we're going to look at reacting these things together. And if we put our balancing coefficients in front, we have a one here. We have a one here and we have a one here. So we'll go through the steps that we have from strategize. We said that starts with 17.5 milliliters calcium hydroxide. We then convert that to moles by multiplying it by the concentration 0 0.100 moles per 1000 milliliters, because that's equivalent to liters. Then you put in your molar ratio. There's one mole calcium hydroxide. For every one mole of H2SO4, <clears throat> you can go ahead and multiply that all the way through. You get that that's 1.75 times 10 to the minus third moles of H2SO4. <clears throat> then you can take this and divide it by that volume we had above, 12.5 milliliters, which in terms of liters is 0 0.0125 liters. So divide that by 0 0.0125 liters. And what you would get out is that this has a concentration, <clears throat> excuse me, of 0 0.14 molar. So you have 0 0.14 molar H2SO4. And if we go up and check to see if this makes sense in reality, we have in terms of comparing volumes, we could actually go down to our sort. We have a smaller amount of H2SO4 with a larger amount of calcium hydroxide. And so it should make sense that its concentration is slightly larger. And then we can do that check thing I talked about before. And I said we can only apply our M1V1 equals M2V2 when your stoichiometric Wow, I should just rewrite that. When your coefficients are equal. 
And even though we have a polyprotic acid, H2SO4, that produces two H pluses, and calcium hydroxide that produces two OH minuses, because you have coefficients that are equal, which another way to say this is that you have a one-to-one -one ratio, you can use M1V1 equals M2V2. And if you do that, what you would get is you have, as before, an unknown concentration for your, uh, or sorry, let me, let me do the correct colors here. If we're going to do blue as our known, we'll do, we have 17.5 milliliters calcium hydroxide times its concentration. So that's 0 0.100 molar. And that's equal to our volume of H2SO4, which was 12.5 milliliters with the unknown concentration X, divided by 12.5, divide by 12.5 and you get out the same answer that X is equal to 0 0.14 molar, okay? So we were lucky in the, in the, in the sense that we have this one-to-one -one ratio. If we didn't have that, we just have to settle with this, which is the more complete solution, and the M1V1 is just a way to check. And just as a reminder, the reason we can apply this is because M1V1 is all about equivalent numbers of moles. And when you have this one-to-one -one ratio, it is the same number of moles. If on the other hand, you had a two to one ratio, if you tried to apply this, you'd either be two times too large or um, like half as large as you should be. So this is a, a check, but this should not be your only way to solve these types of problems. I encourage you to do the full solution that I've shown right here, okay? And so in the next video that I'm gonna post, we're gonna talk about a final type of reaction, but for right now, we'll stop right here.